Te salut! Mă numesc Andrei Baciu și bine ai venit la podcastul de vorbă. Astăzi am bucuria de a sta de vorbă cu Chris, auditore Zimmerman. El este un antreprenor și proprietar de afaceri cu un istoric remarcabil. De peste 20 de companii a înființat în 5 țări diferite. Este născut și crescut în Germania. Chris locuiește acum pe frumoasa insulă Mallorca, Spania, alături de soția sa și de cei trei copii ai săi. Pasiunea profundă a lui Chris se află în istoria familiei medici, renumită pentru influența lor în perioada renașterii din Florența, Italia. Chris împărtășește acum descoperitele, descoperirile sale cu oameni din întreaga lume, îmbogățindu-le înțelegerea asupra impactului profund al familiei medici, asupra istoriei și al afacerii. Vreau să vă anunț de la început că acest podcast va fi în engleză. Chris, it's an honor to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And How are you today? Yes, I'm doing great. I'm really enjoying uh, Romania. This is my first time really on business. Uh, years ago, I supported uh, some, you know, some ministry activities, and, uh, uh, and, but this time I got invited to speak at a business conference here. So I flew in yesterday. Uh, we'll fly out again tomorrow, but I have uh, 48 hours uh, and I've already met some incredible people here. I like about you the fact that you are very passionate. You're an intense person. You're obviously really smart. And I, I was talking to you oh. <laughs> before. I don't, I don't feel like that. I actually feel like I need to learn a lot. <laughs> so I always carry around my notepad uh, to, to, to make notes. Yeah, yeah. Usually this is the response of someone who's smart. Someone who always wants to learn. Yeah, yeah. This is great. That's nice. I, I observed that, that you actually have a very tight schedule. And that's why I really appreciate this time. Yes. So thank you. And uh, we're just going to... I'm, I'm actually not in control of my schedule. There, there are some people who've set it up, so I, I just follow the command on where to be when, and, and, and it's, it's a great honor to be here with you today. For me as well, and I have a lot of things to learn from you. You've accomplished a lot. I, I, I was just telling you this um, before our po- filming our podcast. You've done quite a lot of things in your life. You speak more than five languages, or five languages: Spanish, uh, Italian, German, uh, English. Uh, and so oh, on. I love languages. I, I absolutely love languages. We in, in Germany we have a broad education, uh, so I learned Latin in school. I, I for some time went to a French school. Uh, I went to an English school, um, and uh, and actually there, there's a famous saying in Germany uh, by Goethe. Goethe is our Shakespeare, who who said, uh, "Every new language is like a new world." Mm-hmm. And so, in a sense, I, I actually believe that. Uh, when I, a few years ago, started uh, studying I- Italian, before that I had you know, been to Italy many times because I love Ita- Italy, I love Italian food, I love Italian culture. But when I started learning the language, it really opened up a whole new world to me, uh, way beyond just culture. Yeah, that, that's great. This is what I've experienced when I went to, to Germany. Just started, you know, observing people, just going to the market, talking with them. And I got, um, hello, my name is Andre and stuff yeah, like that. And, and you know, another yeah. world would just open up. Yeah. But I have a few questions that I'm really interested in uh, your answer. So what is your calling in life for people who don't know who you are? Yeah, calling is a, is a, is a big word. I, uh, let me just uh, take you back. I studied law at Frankfurt University, so I'm a trained lawyer by, by profession. But already while I was studying, I really felt like I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be a typical lawyer. I'm not just going to uh, manage paper. You know, this is what lawyers do. They may have a secretary, you know, or s- some assistant. But, but uh, then the rest of the day, they're just basically, you know, lots of paper and lots of computer time. And I felt like, you know, I like people. I want to manage people. I want to lead people. And so And I want to create things. So I already started creating companies um, basically straight before I entered university. While I was at university, I was already running a whole b- a bunch of companies. And um, yeah, basically, you know, to, to make a long story short, when I was 19, first year in law school, my uncle from South Africa, he was um, big into real estate, property development, construction. Uh, he, um, he and I got in, in touch with each other. And he wanted to invest in Germany in real estate. Uh, we had already done a project in Kenya, in Nairobi together. So right after school, I went down to Nairobi, Kenya, spent about seven, eight months uh, down there on a construction site. And I really wanted to set up some businesses. So my first business was, was a catering business. Um, I started hiring all kinds of people, opened up some shops at Frankfurt Airport. And I had a whole bunch of people already working for me by the time I graduated. Uh, you, know, you know, 10 cars, 60 people employed, a whole bunch of shops and no money in my bank account. So <laughs> it was my first running business. But then I very soon entered into property investment. So, um, you know, make a long story short, I bought my first apartment complex with 25 apartments downtown Frankfurt. 
Frankfurt while I was still uh, in law school. Wow. And, uh, and that kind of gave me a jump start uh, really in business. And so long story short, I'm 42 now. I've, I've you know, uh, just on my asset side for the last, uh, was it 20, 20 years, oh, more than 20 years, I, I've just been investing uh, on, on the asset side in real estate. So I, apartment complexes, commercial spaces, some hotels, and uh, developed a property portfolio on the one side. On the other side, uh, I've done lots of business development the last 20 years. So I've, I've, I've traveled around the world. Uh, I've spoken a lot of uh, at conferences, um, leadership, uh, management, real estate, um, business conferences, um, also some ministry related, uh, happy to talk about that as well. But um, I've, I've done a lot of business development. So what is my calling? Um, I've, I found through a lot of speaking and interacting with people that really the people I relate best to are, are people out of business, business owners, entrepreneurs. I think like a business owner, I've never been employed in my life. Um, I've always been setting up my own companies, my own risk, my own money, or you know someone else's money that I'm you know stewarding, managing, uh, and you know investing with co-investors. Um, and, um, and 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 you know this is where I know I can add value and where I can help. That's so on the one side. On the other side, I have a great passion um, to help people in ministry, uh, ministry leaders. Um, I've I've uh, trained and developed and helped lots of pastors because uh, I always feel like uh, you know there's something where I can add value as well. So kind of on these two, on my for-profit side, I, I, um, I train and develop and coach entrepreneurs and business owners. On the other side, I uh, invest myself in ministry leaders. So what I can understand from you is that you have a heart for people. Yes. Just helping, developing people, uh, even if they're entrepreneurs, yes. uh, businessmen and businesswomen and uh, women and also for ministry leaders. Yes. That's cool. Um, I want to ask and you. And let me, let me just say, I did not start out like having this great heart for people. I would say actually if, if you have a spectrum between this is task oriented and this is people oriented, I kind of started off over here. I was so task oriented. Like my name, no one ever needed to tell me you need to have a goal in life. I've always had goals. There's always things that I wanted to do, accomplish, tasks that I wanted to achieve. In. And actually, you know, it took me some time within my drivenness to really, really realize if, if you really want to go, you know, far in life, you also need to, you know, be you know relating with people and 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 so I, I've really also worked on my on my social skills and my people skills um, and and developed you know my leadership capacity uh, because I felt like yes I'm called you know I know what you know how to be successful I know the principles I'm studying that and but I really also I want to learn and grow in the area of you know working with people um, and investing myself into people because as you're saying one needs the other uh, I mean oh one hundred yeah need. Uh, people at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and in fact, I mean, some business guys are just terrible people because they're overly task oriented and they really, you know, they 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 they're not nice to people. They don't treat them well. They don't and respect them. Don't have them. this balance. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yes, and um, yeah, one hundred percent. Amazing. Why Jesus? Um, so um, my, I, I did not grow up in a Christian home, um, even though we, our family had a Christian background. So my grandparents were missionaries in Africa. So my family originally is from Germany, but um, also from South Africa. So um, the story goes, my grandfather, after the German uh, war, Second World War, our family lost everything. He basically went down to, uh, to South Africa to work in the mines of South Africa. And uh, that's where he met my grandmother. She was South African. And that's where they started a family. So my mom was born in South Africa. Later on, they moved back to Germany. But I basically, during my childhood, went up and down between Germany and South Africa. Um, so my, later on, my grandparents became missionaries in Africa. So I you know, would always kind of fly down there and spend some time on the mission field, hear stories on, on their faith. But back home, uh, me and my parents, growing up, we did not go to church. And it was really through, um, you know, my influence by my grandparents down in South Africa, but also through um, a local ministry in Germany. Uh, we, we also have something called confirmation uh, in the Lutheran Church. So, we, you know, I'm part of the you know, um, German tradition. Uh, you know, as a 13 year old, you go through this process of confirmation. You get baptized as a child and then you go through confirmation as your 13 year old. And this was really a very crucial time. So I was about 13 years old and I had lots of questions about faith. I had lots of questions about life in general. And I would say even I had my own kind of spiritual uh, questioning and crisis. 
uh, I really was looking for some answers. And um, I remember back then, um, you know, I checked out all different kinds of religions, but I also wanted to learn more about the Christian uh, faith tradition. So I actually literally read through the entire Bible when I was 13 years old. I would come home after school um, and, and I would just sit there and I would just read the Bible. I don't know how much I understood it, you know, going back, the Bible is not an easy book, it's very complicated. You started with the Old Testament? I started in the Old Testament, so I left it from, you know, <laughs> you know I started from left to right, how you read a book. And, and I literally read, the, and, and I'm always surprised when I meet Christians who've never read the Bible and they call themselves Christian. I'm like, yeah. you know, how can you, you know, if this is the book, uh, you know, you, you better read it. So I read it and because I'm, you know, I'm also a thinking person, I, I want to wrestle with questions. I, you know, I don't just take anything for granted and, and I, uh, you know, I want to uh, search a little bit deeper. So, so um, yeah, I discovered faith and I discovered Jesus. Uh, as a son of God um, through uh, studying the scriptures and then uh, also some uh, Boy Scout um, uh, ministry um, part to a church connected in my hometown. Wow. Okay. What does it mean to get your house in order? I, I, I wanted to ask you this question, but... Uh, well, uh, I, so, so you're referencing a, a book that I wrote. So last year I wrote a book called Get Your House in Order, Success Principles mm -hmm. Based on the Life of Cosimo de' Medici. So it's a longer story, but um, I've become an expert as, 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 uh, on the Medici family, which is this Italian Renaissance family. Um, for basically, it's Italy's most prominent family for 300 years. Uh, they called the shots in Italy. They uh, started off as a business uh, family. They were uh, cloth merchants. They were cloth merchants who went into banking. They set up this incredible banking empire, the Medici Bank. Uh, then they went into politics and then they went into art, architecture, and then even religion. So they had this incredible Renaissance family. It all got started by Cosimo de' Medici, he's the patriarch, the, the founding father. And a few years ago, I was on a, on a visit you know, with my family during the pandem pandemic 2020. We were on a family vacation down in Italy. And for various reasons, it was a very terrible time for us as a family. We, you know, my boys were at home, so I've been married for over 20 years. We've got three teenagers, 18, 16, and 14 uh, today. But back then, um, you know, homeschooling didn't work for us at all. Uh, my wife wasn't doing well, and uh, and I'm on this beautiful summer vacation down in Florence. Everything outside is beautiful because, um, you know, it's it's Tuscany, it's Florence, uh, and we're on family vacation. Um, and the city was empty. There were no Americans allowed and no Chinese people. You know, there was this whole travel ban. And um, on the outside, it looked perfect. But internally, I was not doing so well um, for various reasons. Um, a big business seat had just fallen through and I couldn't travel. I couldn't do all the stuff I normally do. And, um, and then in the middle of the night, um, I kind of woke up in cold sweat and, uh, and uh, I had downloaded a, a book on the Medici family. And as I was reading about the Medici family, specifically Cosimo, I felt like, wow, here's a business guy uh, like myself. Um, and it seemed, I, I always, I knew him before. Um, I always thought, you know, he's just a great business guy. But as I was reading about his life, I felt like, wow, this guy is more than just a business guy. He really has his house in order. And not just one house, not just his business sphere, but all the other spheres of his life as well. So, uh, you know, I went on this whole book hunt. But by now, I've read more than 70 books on the Medici family. I've hired some art historians to uh, help me do some research. And I wrote a book. Uh, on, on Cosimo, where I basically did something very interesting. So the Medici family, there are, I don't know, a thousand books written on the Medici family because they are so important in Italy. Um, and, but, but all these books are written by historians and art historians, which are wonderful people to record the story of, uh, you know, because, you know, hist historians and art historians. But um, no, no one ever, as a business guy, took on the business lens and kind of said, okay, how did they do that? Because what it's are a the different principles? approach. It's a different approach. So what are the principles? What can I learn from them? And so, um, yeah, I, I basically just asked the normal questions. Um, I also started, started studying art history uh, at university. And you know, so I'm curious about art and art investment. And you know, that, that's kind of how it came about. Yeah, well, one day I'll, I'll look forward to reading your book. You don't have any books right now with you, so... Right. Well, uh, on, uh, I've got, on, on the website, you can download it for free. It's medicilegacy.com um, and you just uh, can go there and there's a, there's a button you can just uh, download it for free. Uh, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, tell me what triggered you to analyze the life of Cosimo de Medici and how did their story influence your life? I know you told me that you were sitting there in Florence and all that, but was there another motive 
that you started studying this? Um, yeah, so very, very simple. Um, so uh, three years ago, so uh, we, you know, during the pandemic, we also made a, a drastic move as a family. So uh, we were living in Frankfurt, Germany. That was our home base. That's where we have our company set up. That's where you know I had lots of ministry that I was involved in. So we never thought about moving overseas or going somewhere else. And uh, and during the pandemic, you know, everything became terrible for us as a family. And um, to make a long story short, basically overnight we left Germany and went down to Spain. We then went down to Mallorca. Um, and, uh, and the reason was um, my wife chose the place, number one. Number two, down there the schools were open. So in Germany we had this t terrible lockdown. My boys were sitting at home, no, no schooling. And in Mallorca the schools were open. So basically overnight we just left. And we originally wanted to do just a sabbatical, a few months. And then, you know, but after a month of uh, living on the beach uh, and uh, enjoying the sun of Mallorca, we're like we're never going to move again. This is, this is a great place. So um, it was during that time that I also kind of rearranged my my whole whole uh, yeah, basically life uh, in the sense that um, I hired some more people on the executive level and, and some management people and I really climbed out of operations. Um, you know, I've got a whole bunch of companies all over and a whole bunch of uh, nonprofits that I oversee and I basically said I don't want to do uh, daily uh, operations anymore. Yeah, because this is what I asked you before the podcast. How do you manage to do all of these things? Well, I have people. Well, hired. I don't. Well, I don't manage. Yeah, so the, the and the honest answer is I don't manage any uh, all that stuff. In fact, if you look at my email inbox, I get a few emails per day. I don't get much because I've really I, I, I set my house in order by by having different people basically put them in place um, and and then they manage stuff. So you know, I'm I'm on the shareholder level basically. And you delegate. Totally. And I delegate, yeah, I delegate. I also have to say, I've got an amazing wife. Um, she's kind of the head of finance. She oversees uh, on the property side. Um, she, uh, she oversees also the staff and the employees that, that we have. And um, so, yeah, so um, that, that's amazing. Hmm. Um, this is a very important question because I, I watched your, uh, your video clip that you, you only have one video clip on your website, the Medici one. And you, you talked about three ideas, success, significance, and legacy. In your opinion, what is the difference between success, significance, and legacy? Yeah, um, and okay, let me let me uh, answer that. Um, so uh, the the you know also to the question you asked before is like, what's your motive behind you know studying the Medici family? It was really also uh, at this point. I'm you know I, I turned forty and I've already you know um, have created a whole bunch of different enterprises all over, and so the question at some point is. Okay, so how you know how how do you manage that, and how do you set it up? And also, if you've got children like I do, I've got three boys. We call them the German mafia. <laughs> uh, you know, they they are mafia boys, and I can tell you some uh, other crazy stories on how, why they're really the mafia. Is you know, it's really about you know how do you set it all up? How do you structure it? And and also, you know, how do you uh, pass it on um, and create a legacy that is go also goes beyond yourself. And um, so that's why I was also looking for some role models. And so that's why I felt like the Medici family, actually, you know, that it's by far not a, a perfect family. Um, um, you know, I can tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Medici family. Uh, uh, they are not saints at all. But um, they've shaped culture. So many say that they are the godfathers of the Renaissance. They really brokered as a business family. They brokered this new epoch called the Renaissance. And um, and I was looking for some role models. And so that's why I started studying them more uh, in, in detail. Okay, to your question, success, significance, and legacy. So success is kind of in your first run as you start off in business, as a business guy, you want to create some success. Now, hopefully, your definition of success is not just money. Okay. Of course, yeah. So uh, your success, you have a little bit more broader understanding of you know what it you know what it does it mean to be successful also in your marriage and your relationships with your kids as a father as a husband, but also in your community in your city perhaps in your church, um, you know. So you know success hopefully is more dimensioned. But how but, do you define it? Because when and sorry for interrupting you, but when I usually hear teenagers or how do you become successful? Meaning in their in their back of their mind, they're like. Uh, when I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to be successful. But as you said, success is different in different areas of your life. How does success look like for you when you become a father, when you're a husband, when you're a business? But how, what success for you? Well, I, I would go back to the title of the book that I wrote. And very much on purpose, I, I, I named it Get Your House in Order. So uh, in the book, um, I actually take the reader through four different houses 
um, that I discovered around the life of Cosimo. So the first one is the villa, the Villa di Carreggi, which is the house that he went to to really work on himself. It's the house of personal development. Okay. So I think on, just on a personal level, everyone, we need to really uh, work on ourselves. Um, we're not just uh, born as successful human beings. We really need to learn how to develop our minds and our psyche and our heart and our emotions. We, we need to develop ourselves. And so, you know, Cosimo had a place where he did that. Uh, number two, um, uh, I talk about the house Palazzo Medici Riccardi. It's the, it's the uh, big palazzo that he built for his family. It's the house of relationships. So another area for me of success is really how do you manage your relationships? So that is, if you're married to your, to your spouse, uh, then to your children, but also in your community, into the city, with uh, people of influence, business partners, uh, clients. How do you build good relationships? Now I know, because I often, t uh, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm surrounded by business guys, I know some business guys who have terrible relationships. Um, they're, they, you know, they're, their wife is, is, is unhappy, um, the kids don't want to talk with them, and they they've, have got a graveyard full of relationships in business. So there's really something we need to de develop within our relationships. How do we create de a relationship successfully? The third house is uh, the Signoria, is the house of influence. So uh, Cosimo de' Medici really um, started um, influence the city uh, and, and, and building his influence out what he wanted to accomplish in the city with the poor people, uh, with the rich people, with, with, the, with, with other people who are in, in similar fields and he worked on his influence. And the fourth one is his business. Uh, the Medici Bank became um, a cash machine. Uh, they, they set up an empire all over Europe. They had branches all over Italy but also in Avignon and in Bruges all the way up to London. The Medici Bank in the 15th century created an empire so they really you know created this business success as well. So for me uh, in, in short uh, getting your house in order is not just one house. You need to look at your different spheres of influence as a person uh, in my, you know, in, out of my view, as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, uh, and, and then look at the different spheres. How do you set them up successfully? Now, so I understand from you that these four rooms were actually from the inside out. First of all, you have to work on yourself. That's your typical person, right? Then you need to look at your family. Then it's going to be the influence, and then it's going to be the uh, number four is going to be the business. The business. Yeah, it makes sense. So it, yeah, I, I would not say that you know you have to take in, the, in that order. I think we always have to work on all of that. Yeah. Uh, so I always need to work on ourselves. We always need to work on our business. We always need to work on our you know our, our um, you know family and relationships. So but, it's, it's but this a, is the holistic. But it's image. a holistic approach. Yeah, and, and that's where you know also the, you know I, so I'm building out a learning community only for entrepreneurs and business owners from around the world. I've got people from all over the world that you know. I'm, I basically coach and train and we're, we're forming a, a learning community and really it's a holistic uh, you know it's a holistic approach because there are lots of you know on the internet and uh, there's lots of coaching programs there's lots of training programs and it's just you know how to make more money how to you know how to get more cash in your bank account which is beautiful uh, you know I, I think we should all have cash in our in our bank account you know and I help guys actually you know create successful businesses um, but hey it's not everything I live on the island of Mallorca, which is a beautiful Mediterranean island. There are lots of very, very successfully, financially successfully business guys who live on the island, um, but they've neglected the other spheres of influence. Yeah. You know, um, if, if you talk to my boys, uh, my boys go to private British schools on the island. Most of the parents within uh, that school system, the parents are divorced. Um, they are on their second marriage, third marriage. Um, you know, they have t bad relationships with their, with their, with their children. It's terrible. Yeah. And so, um, you know, th because they overlooked those areas of their life that were meaningful to them, but they said, "No, I'm just going to focus on the business side." But then, the well, and, and let, let's be honest, it's really difficult to create a business that is really successful. Where, really, where, where it's not just kind of getting by from a month to month, but really where you have a business that is pumping cash, that is really delivering the yeah. results. So to create that, you need to sacrifice. It does, not, it does not come without sacrifice. Yeah. So here is what happens. If you really go, you know, very driven at a business and want to create it successfully, then you need, you're, you know, you're probably going to sacrifice some other areas of your life. And I actually, uh, out of my life and creating a whole bunch of businesses and enterprises, I can say that I failed in other areas of my life over the course of you know, 25 years. I've, I've done mistakes, I've done things wrong, I've hit some crisis um, because um, you know, I, I neglected uh, that. So that's why I've got this great passion 
Um, and I actually consider myself not as the guru, you know, who has all the answers, but I'm really myself learning and developing in these different areas. I really uh, want to learn further as myself. I'm not done with business yet. Um, you know, I want to create many more businesses. I want to do lots of more. Because uh, that's, that's your well, passion. Well, I love. I think you know, being an entrepreneur, and business owner, for me, that's a calling. Uh, um, I, you know, uh, yesterday I spoke with some guys, and I said, God is an entrepreneur. God created something out of nothing. Yes. You know, that's the whole story of, of the scriptures, how the Bible starts. You know, at, at the beginning, God created something out of nothing. Well, what does a business uh, entrepreneur do? He creates something out of nothing. There's no business, and all of a sudden he says, Well, you know, let's let's design a product, let's create a, a service, and you know, let's get some people who pay for that. And so you create something out of nothing. So um, for me, it's a very spiritual exercise to create a company. Uh, you know, it's is part of my, my spirituality as well. So you dis define success and understand your uh, definition of it. What about significance? Yes. So um, once you've reached a certain kind of success in your life, let, let's talk about finance, okay? Um, and we can also talk about the other areas. But let's say finance. Um, yeah, at the beginning when you start off uh, and you don't come from a wealthy family, but you kind of really have to grind it out and work yourself up, um, you know, it takes some time to be successful where you've got money coming in and if you really set it up well as a business owner then then you've got a company and it, it's pumping cash okay that's great so you you know basically tick the box and say okay i've got a, i've got a, i've got a, i've got a good business th which is successful um now that's already hard to get there okay so it's yeah. not, i'm not saying it's easy but uh, you know that, that that's a goal and some reach when reach that goal when they're 40 some when they're 50 and some you know never even though they may be in business. Okay, but let's say you, you, you achieve that. You've got a business that is producing uh, income and that you know, uh, uh, has great revenue and, you, you, know, and, and, and you, you, you can say it's successful. Well, then what? What's the next step? Well, what's the next step? What's the next step? Um, is there perhaps something beyond just creating this cash flow that you can you know, do perhaps through your business or through other uh, entities and other spheres um, where you really uh, work on significant things in this world. So I've, for, I can give you some examples out of, out of my, um, my life. My, our family, uh, because of our Africa connection, we've always loved to do things in Africa. My grandfather, he was a missionary in Africa. He helped churches, uh, but, but not just churches. He also planted some schools and helped with universities and hospitals. So a few years ago, um, I, I actually went to one of the schools that my grandfather some 30 years ago had planted. And I took a bunch of guys with me from Germany and we visited a school in Goma in Congo, in the Congo, DRC, um, very poor area. And we came there and there's a beautiful school that has hundreds and hundreds of, of kids. And actually it's our family name is on top of the school. And it's because my grandfather kind of, you know, helped birth this school. And there are lots of children now receiving education, hmm. which is wonderful. So as I saw that, and not just that, but also some other, some of the other projects, I felt like yeah, that's so cool. Also, I as a business guy, I want to I want to do something like that. I want to. So so for example, I'm at the moment um, helping build a hospital in the Congo. So we're supporting some schools, but then there's a hospital project. We saw there's a big hospital crisis. So I've taken probably 150 people from Germany with me to the Congo. Uh, to help schools, doctors doing surgeries. We've done thousands of surgeries by now wow. in, in the Congo. And you know, I'm not a doctor, but but I'm a business guy, and and, and I know how to how to organize and put projects together. So, um, so basically, back to your investing question, investing your you know, life and others from success to significance. You know how? Uh, you know, I, I think if you're just living for success, as you know, you're selling yourself short. There's more you yeah. can do with your life, and uh, significance is all about purpose. What, 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 what's your purpose? What do you want to, you, you, we all see this world, um, now the world is interconnected, we, you know, we, we know about the problems we have in this world, well, what are you going to do about it? What's, what, what's your angle? Where are you, where are you making a difference? What, what does God, if you're a Christian, what does God put on your heart? And not just for Christians, you know, I've got lots of Muslim friends, I've got friends from other religions, and I'm always like, what do you feel stirred to actually change in this world? 
this can be poverty, um, this can be housing. I've got some friends who are building houses like crazy because they want to, you know, um, help with homelessness. I've got people who um, child sponsorship. They they want to sponsor children in their in their upbringing. I've I've helped create a, a ministry uh, against sex trafficking and prostitution, which is a big problem in Germany. There are lots of uh, lots of women being basically sex trafficked, and so well. Um, what can we do against that? So th that is for me a another step, the next step. You know, success, yes, it's great to work on success, yeah. but let's please work beyond that. Let's work on some significance. So as I said, investing your life in others, that's, that's for you uh, in terms of uh, significance. And last but not least, what about legacy? Yes, so success, significance, and then the last piece is legacy. Legacy really is the question. Um, what are you gonna what are you gonna leave behind we we all have a have a time span here on this earth we are, you know we we know our we know our birthday yeah um but we don't know when it's gonna end but we know it will end and actually this time span is not not that long we always think it's very long but the older you get <laughs> the more you know it's not uh, that long and so the question is um at the end of your life like what do you want to be remembered for what do you want people at your funeral uh, to say about you? And not just because it's nice to hear some good stories about you, but really, where have you had and created an impact that goes beyond your own life? And so for me, it flows out of significance. The next level is really, you know, what can you set up? So let me give you some examples. I, we, we've set up as a family, we've set up some family foundations where we, we're really, um, for us, it's not just about, you know, making more money. Uh, in fact, I actually find this quite boring uh, just to be in this money game. Um, it's really about, you know, what kind of impact can we have way beyond ourselves? So for me, generosity, uh, philanthropic uh, engagement, impact investing, um, and not just you know getting some more interest on your capital, but really impact through also business strategic investment is a, is a is a is a really really important question. And then I've got children. I you know what what are they? I'm going to pass on to them. They're going to have children. What do we pass on uh, to those? So there's a whole question we need to answer about what kind of legacy do you want to leave uh, to the next generations? Hmm. Very powerful thoughts. Uh, thank you for this. Um, if you're 20 years old again, what would you do? What, what, what would you have done differently? If you were to relive your life again and you were 20 years old again? Yeah, so I feel very fortunate that I had some incredible mentors who helped me in my development. So I, I shared at the beginning that um, one of them was my uncle uh, from South Africa. He basically became my mentor. He, uh, he helped me get a jumpstart in real estate investment. And, you know, he really helped me understand this whole game of, you know, how do you, how do you do real property investment, not just by your own little house, but how do you strategically set up a company to do investments? Um, without that, I would have not been able to create, you know, this, the, all these companies with, with all these houses. So uh, mentorship, is for me the most important thing as you are a young person. And that's why, you know, I'm creating a whole company here for entrepreneurs and business owners with that, where I have to manage. So in a sense, that's a way for me to give back. But if I was 20 years uh, 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 old, I would look for people that could mentor me and help me in these different areas. You know, on business development, if I'm a business guy, on personal development, on relationship development and influence development. So you can have more mentors, not just one. Well, yes, yes. And I've, I've, let me put it this way, I've paid a lot of money to fly around the world uh, and participate in masterminds, inner circles, uh, leadership programs, development programs to build myself. I'm, I'm not the guy who invented all this. I've, I'm a product of many, many people who've invested into me. And so for me, the, the most important thing for young people is to, to, you know, to find coaches, find mentors, find role models that they can look up to and that they can, that can help them go through these steps, success, significance and legacy. So they can help you rediscover the, the wheel, not just to try to invent it because they, they, they've done stuff in their life and then you can look at them and, and say, hey, I don't want to review the same mistakes that, that you did. I want to be wiser and wiser. That's very insightful. What are some non-negotiable principles that, that you are led by in this life? So I, my, 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 my um, background is, is Christian. I, I became a Christian as a teenager. So um, you said 13 I, years I, old. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm, a person, I'm a person of faith. 
And and so um, for me, my my and you know sometimes I talk about this publicly. Some you know sometimes I, I don't. But um, you know for me it is really important that that I uh, have a higher authority that I submit to. Um, in fact, I talk a lot. You know I speak a lot at business conferences, and um, for me business people can be very dangerous because in a Why? sense um, they because you know they they have no one on top of them. They, they, in, in a sense, they are the kings of their own little kingdom. Uh, you know, you know, because they are the top of the pyramid. They, they employ staff. They have people that will work for them, um, and 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 so they are not accountable in a sense to anyone. They just, you know, they, they, um, you know, obviously, if they don't have enough clients, you know, they, they go out of business. But, but you know, they, they're kind of creating their own ecosystem, and so um, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, but the question is, is there a higher authority that you also submit to? And submit to, for me, is a positive word because it actually means is that, you know, I check, you know, um, you know uh, is what I'm doing, is it, is it true? Um, is, it, is it loving? Uh, is it kind? Is it um, serving? Um, is it helping other people flourish? I don't just want to be another shrewd business guy. We've got lots of examples in our world where business guys are terrible people. Uh, I don't want to be like that. So I actually, um, you know, I have some spiritual practices uh, that I that I follow in order to make sure that I'm I'm submitting to God. So one of them is we, on Sundays we go as a family. We go to church. And we're a, a part of a church family, and so I sit there and I listen to the preacher, pastor, and, and I take notes, and I want to learn from them. I read the scriptures. Um, you know, I want the scriptures, the, the Bible, to inform you know some of my thinking. And so for me, it's really important that there's you know kind of uh, in, in politics we talk about checks and balances. Whenever you have power, and you know um, you always need to look for the checks and balances. So for me, as a business guy, I would say um, that uh, that that is part of you know my uh, my faith background. Thank you. What are some tough lessons? We we have five more minutes, you know, time just 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 passed really fast. Um, and uh, you are asking some very good questions here. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm willing to learn, and I. It's great. I, I gave a lot of thoughts. So learning is one of my li life principles. I I think one of the. One of the most terrible things uh, that uh, people are brought up with is that, you know, learning is kind of, you know, what we do in school um, and then perhaps in college or university and then we're done. I want to share something with you really quick because I believe we have the same mentality and I'm, I'm really excited about this. When I was in college and my whole life basically, I didn't like to go to do some other stuff, you know, going to the city more, going bowl bowling with my, my colleagues. But if there were someone, a businessman, a pastor or someone, I would just have the money that I have for food. I would just go and travel with that person, and I would just say, "Hey, can you pour me a little bit of your knowledge, of your wisdom?" That's wonderful. And this is what I like to do. So these That's questions, awesome. yeah, and I want to learn from you as much as I can. What are some tough lessons that you learned from uh, from this life up until uh, I don't know two, three? Oh, tough lessons. Oh, yeah, five minutes, but I, I'm, oh, I'm really curious. Oh man, tough, tough lessons. Oh, so early in my twenties. I, I've, I've, um, I was creating a whole bunch of things, um, companies. I already was successful in, in many ways, but I overstretched my own capacity on how much I can handle. Mm -hmm. And I actually, from one day to the next, I almost hit like, like, a, like a block um, and like a burnout. And, um, and I had some very loving and wise parents, and here's what they did. My parents bought me a one-way ticket to the United States of America. And it was literally a one-way ticket because I did not know, they did not know how long I need to get out of my world and actually spend some time to, you know, piece my life back together. Uh, I had, a, you know, I, I couldn't read any emails anymore. I couldn't sleep. I, you know, it, it was really, it was really difficult for me because I'd, I'd just done too many things. And, and so um, I took weeks where I was in the US, um, I traveled by myself, I had a few friends that I could visit and, um, and I every day went and read some literature and I didn't read any business leadership books, I really read books more on the contemplation side, yeah. <laughs> you know, some philosophy and some theology and, uh, and out of that um, I really, so the whole period was perhaps six to seven weeks, um, out of that period I really took a big big lesson that I need to 
watch on how much I can handle. That oh, I don't. That oh. I don't. That I don't overstretch uh, my things. And one of the principles I took away is the principle of the Sabbath. You know, it, you know, it goes back to you know the story of creation, the Jewish principle that one day a week you need to take off. And so um, I wouldn't cons- say that I'm overly religious, but I'm very religious when it comes about the Sabbath. Uh, so one, once a week, for 24 hours, I basically totally unplug. No emails, no phone, no meetings, no agenda. Basically, I I do what the Jews do. I drop everything, and I you know I I, I am a, become a human being again. We're, we're human beings, not human doings. And well, so for six days a week, you know, uh, I'm all busy, but one day a week I'm off. And I, it came out of that period where I had just done too much. And so, um, you know, one of the tough lessons, yeah, I, I, I kind of crashed and then I need to start over again. Um, and uh, I can tell you, I've, I've met lots of very successful business guys from one day to the next, something snapped because they've just done too much. And so for me, it's a really important lesson uh, that, you, that, you, that you learn to take care of yourself. Uh, and that you watch your, you know, you watch your limits. Well, and um, um, I want to ask you uh, this one because we have um, uh, one more minute. What are your passions? What do you like to do in your free time? Oh, because I, you I, have. I, yeah. Um, so uh, sport and exercise. I go to the gym every day. Uh, sauna. I, I sauna in the evening, uh, every evening, and I jump into an ice bath. Um, I, at the moment, my passion is art history, so I'm studying art history. I'm looking at create paintings. I go to museums whenever I travel. I, I try to put in a few hours in, a, in an art museum and learn about that. So um, I, I'm very passionate about learning and growing, and, and so that, that's what I what I do. Chris, thank you so much for for the time. Um, it, it was a learning experience for me, and um, I really appreciate what you, what, what, what you did I, today. Great pleasure. Thank you so much. Dragi ascultători, dragi telespectatori, ați observat câte lucruri poți să faci cu timpul pe care îl ai. Doar trebuie să fii determinat, să lași pe Dumnezeu să-ți arate ce să faci pe mai departe. Vă aștept și data următoare și data viitoare la un alt episod de Vorbă Podcast. Până atunci, toate cele bune! Mm-hmm.